uh, before I go to details, uh, 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 because we have set up our uh, new lab for the last two, three years, and this is sort of like an advertisement slide, what we have been working in our group. So uh, these are the major fields what we have been working. Uh, one of them is like quantum capacitance measurement. Uh, which by this technique, we can prove the compressibility uh, of your uh, 2D systems, like graphene and black phosphorus and those kind of systems. Here you use like a, a very thin top HVN in order to measure the quantum capacitance. We also study uh, in, uh, HVN encapsulated NPN devices. And by this top gate technique, we can prove really the one by F noise close to the Dirac point. And not only that, also by aligning the graphene and boron nitrate, we can create, you know, a moire pattern, which is a multiple Dirac cone. And we look that by one way of noise and address the issues of the screening properties of these multiple Dirac. And we also study this quantum hall uh, uh, effect in NPN devices. And the beauty of the NPN devices is there uh, along the interface of this NPN junction, you have these co-propagating edge channels, and we looked at how this coherent mixing of this uh, uh, edge, edge state is going to happen, and by looking at the UCF fluctuation, which only happens in a bipolar regime, not in a unipolar regime. And then also we make the atomically thin vertical PN junction, which is unique compared to like, you know, that uh, like deeply, uh, the conventional lateral PN junction, because in this case, the uh, uh, semiconductor, you have the conduction and valency band, if the Fermi energy lies inside the band, you have like a metallic behavior. Inside the gap, it's like a semiconductor or it's insulated depending on the gap versus temperature. Now, what happens when you bring close to a superconductor and normal conductor? In term, they make sort of like a zero, like plus k, it makes a pair with a minus k, and they are like a spin singlet state. So, okay, so how does it look like, uh, how does it look like in, a, uh, um, uh, in a real space? So, electron comes here. At the boundary, it reflected back, back as a whole, which retraced back the, uh, uh, the path of the incident electron. So this is called a retro type of and ref reflection. On the other hand, if you look at the normal reflection, electron reflect as like this. So how do you prove this and reflection in a uh, like a, this kind of uh, uh, like a mesoscopic devices? The way we do it is called a BTK formalism. So you have basically superconductor and a normal semiconductor. Between them, you have some sort of barrier. And we looked at the conductance as a function of called bias energy. For example, here in this case, the Fermi energy of your uh, metal or semiconductor is actually uh, uh, matching with your uh, uh, coherent peak of uh, this quasi particle density of state. You have a large conductance. As you, uh, uh, as you uh, uh, align the Fermi energy inside your superconducting gap, if the barrier is very large, conductance will be uh, suppressed and again, once you align with your, uh, this, this uh, coherence peak, you'll have a large conductance. So by looking at the conductance near the zero bias, that tells you the information about the Andre reflex. So most of my experience will be done as a function of this bias uh, uh, voltage. Now why, why is unique for the graphene? The graphene, as you know, there are several talks in the morning, the graphene is a unique material where you can, you can tune the Fermi energy. The tunability actually changes the properties of Andre reflex. For example, if you have a Fermi energy, let's say very, uh, you know, uh, far away from the Dirac point, or you can think like a, uh, it's like a much higher than the delta, so what happened, the Andre reflection is, has been predicted, it's like a, like a retro type of Andre reflection. On the other hand, if you bring the uh, Fermi energy near the Dirac point, such that your Fermi energy is smaller than the superconducting gap, you can show that actually Andre reflection is like a normal reflection, or it's like, is, which is known as a specular Andre reflection. And the specular, actually this electron hole, which are entangled and they are spatially separated. So in quantum computation and et cetera, it has a huge impact. So we are basically looking for this kind of thing. So how, so how do you understand that uh, uh, retro type of mechanism or specular uh, 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 type of mechanism? So here is the overview. As I told you, this two electron has to be, momentum has to be zero, and the spin has to be singlet kind of thing. So what, the way they make it, for example, in a retro, when the Fermi energy here, the electron with the finite energy, uh, uh, and uh, they make the pair here, which is in the same band. As a result, uh, one thing I, I, I should mention, if you have a barrier like this, the momentum has to be, momentum has to conserve along the y direction very strictly. It may not conserve along the x direction because of the barrier, but along the interface, the momentum has to conserve strictly. Now, because of this momentum conservation along y direction, what happens, you can think like this, if this is the velocity, it will go inside, which is not possible. Right. So, so by this, you can show that this is the only allowed uh, thing, and that's the way 
you can have this retro type of uh, this thing. On the other hand, if you have a specular thing, now process is intraband, interband, okay? What I mean interband, so electron is in from the conduction band, but hole is from the valency band. Because of that, because d by dk is now opposite of this one, so the velocity direction is different. So you by, by this way, you can show that the, the, the reflected hole will be like this. So that's the specular. So before coming, so before going to like retro to specular, there is like a, there, there is like a non-retro type point the diffuser. What I mean, when you come closer to your Dirac point, you can, you can, you can have a situation that uh, the electron coming from like a, this red circle and the holes from the blue. So you have a, you know, you have a two different energy contour. And because of that, in order to conserve the y direction of momentum, the incident electron angle and reflected hole angle will be different. And in fact, the reflected hole angle is bigger than the incident electron angle, right? So, so, so which means they are not retracing with the same path. So that's the non retro type of uh, this thing. In fact, if you, so now, and the reflection can happen any angle, but for this kind of limit, you cannot have an the reflection beyond a critical angle, such that electron, let's say it comes like this, and reflected back hole goes along this interface, like an internal reflex. So, as you approach close to the Dirac point, your, uh, uh, there is a critical angle will appear, and because of that, you expect to suppress of the conductor. So this is the theoretical prediction, uh, 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 theoretical prediction how the critical angle changes as a function of Fermi energy. As you see far away, you have, this is normalized with the pi by two, you have almost pi by two critical angle. As you close to the uh, Dirac point, it's suppressed, and the center peak is because of the specular and the reflex, okay? So what are the difficulties? Why it not be seen, uh, the specular and retro to non-retro type of the reflection? The main problem is the inhomogeneity of the substrate. As you know, the graphene of the substrate, it has a Fermi energy broadening of the 100 of MeV. And the conventional superconductor like aluminum is like a 0.3 MeV. And everything happened is close to the superconducting gap. So, so that's the reason it's a, like a, it's like a uh, smearing, of, uh, uh, smearing effects and you do, nobody has seen uh, uh, this kind of uh, thing. So what is the solution? The solution is either you reduce the Fermi energy broadening, as well as you can, in, you can think like using a uh, um, larger superconducting gap. So that's the reason we have used this HBN uh, encapsulated, uh, uh, HBN supported devices, and we use NBS2 as a large superconducting gap, which has like a 2.2 uh, MeV. So we use like, uh, as Mondar was saying in the morning, we use conventional transport technique, which was in, uh, uh, invented by uh, Philip Kim's group. And uh, um, these are the, uh, I'll, not, I'll just skip the details. So we transfer the graphene on top of boron nitride, and, uh, and you have this kind of heterostructure, like for example, MOT2 and single layer MOS2 heterostructure, single layer graphene and boron nitride, and uh, this kind of uh, thing. So here is the, uh, one of, uh, the device which we have been, I'm going to uh, present the data. Here you can see the graphene is, uh, uh, has been transferred on boron nitride. And there are predefined contacts like on touching graphene, and there are contacts without touching graphene, and then, then you transfer uh, NBAC2 on uh, that predefined contact. So that's the, your channel you have. So typically our channels are two to uh, three micron uh, length, and width is like a one to two micron. And this is another device. So this is a, a different NBAC2 device using a tunneling uh, spectroscopy. We have characterized the superconducting gap, which is around 2.2 MeV and TC around 7 Kelvin. So we do four probe uh, geometry to measure the conductor. So here is the typical conductance, how they look like. 10 Kelvin, you see the GVG of your uh, data, and 236 millikelvin, you have, you see this is the GVG. But here, one, one thing I, I would like to address the issue here, you, you see here there are lots of fluctuations coming, and if you look at the bias and gate voltage dependence curve, in fact, they, you see kind of diamond kind of features, which is a characteristic of uh, like a Fibri ferro interference. So that tells you the device is in, in a ballistic regime and so on. So now, as I told you, to, to probe the angle reflection, here is the data as a function of bias energy and as a function of Fermi energy shift. Red color means high conductance and blue is the basically, you have a low conductance. So what you see here, that uh, uh, around the Dirac point, there is a, some sort of like a, uh, around zero bias, there is a conductance suppressed, and around the uh, Dirac point, you have the conductance, uh, so look like some conductance suppressed. So, but conductance, you know, around the, around the Dirac point, of course, it will be conductance will be suppressed because of the low density of states, but right? So in order to, in order to address only the angle reflection, not the effect of the density of state, what we have, what we, we are plotting here, the conductance at below TC 
normalize with the conductance above DC. So that takes care the effect of the density of stair. So, and that can be seen here. So now if you look at, if I cut now different bias energy, so this is the uh, inside the superconducting gap. This is above the superconducting gap. What happens along the Fermi energy change? You see above superconducting gap, there is no change. Conductance remains pretty constant. On the other hand, inside the superconducting gap, conductance is suppressed around the deduct point. Okay? And uh, similarly, you can, uh, instead of cutting for different bias, you can look at the data at cutting for different Fermi energy, for example, these vertical blue lines, and you can see uh, that uh, at the Dirac point, the conductance has the lowest minimum. Okay, so this we repeat also uh, uh, several other devices. This is another device even uh, for uh, much larger uh, gate voltage range, and we see that around the Dirac point it is uh, uh, suppressed. On the other hand, if you took like a graphene NBS2 has a large Fermi energy, so this device. I, I, I think I, I, I forgot to mention, this device, we had a Fermi energy broadening of 10 MeV. If you have a broadening like 30 MeV, we don't see almost suppression is hardly visible. And we did same experiment for only graphene, there is no change. It remains almost pretty constant. So, uh, so how do you understand, uh, 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 how do I model our experimental data with a the theory? So, as I told you, the con differential conductance by VTK formalism and there are, uh, uh, by Binyakar also, there are uh, papers on, uh, on this theoretical part. So you can calculate this di by dv as a function of uh, your Fermi energy. So the di by dv depend on your density of state, which is this quantity, and depend on this theta is the angle of reflection of the angular reflection. So you have zero to pi by two, uh, uh, your, uh, this uh, angle, where, where the electron can reflect as the angular reflection. But as I told you, there is a critical angle beyond which under reflection is not possible. So you have basically this 0 to pi by 2, you can write in a 2 integral, 1 is 0 to theta C critical angle in which you have the under reflection part. On the other hand, theta C to pi by, t, pi by 2, you have only the normal reflection part. And if you do that, you will get a normalized, uh, like the way I, we did experimentally normalize, you can normalize this density of state effect and you see the uh, uh, without Fermi energy broadening conductor suppressed and even at, at, at exactly the point, you have the peak at the center, uh, um, all right, and which is coming from the specular one. And if you add the Fermi energy broadening, now you see, uh, um, you, you don't see the signature of the specular one, only you see a suppression of uh, 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 your uh, conductance near the Dirac point. And this is the, your experimental laser, what I showed you before, and this is the theoretical model with the 10 MeV uh, uh, Fermi energy broadening. So, so uh, this is the first part of, uh, and so we don't see the signature of the specular one uh, because our Fermi energy body is still higher than the, your superconducting gap. Recently, there is a, uh, uh, by Kim's group, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they seems that they have seen uh, uh, evidence of specular and the reflection in a bilayer. So this is the first part of my talk uh, where I talked about mostly uh, how the energy reflection happens near the Dirac point, in particular, the transition from retro to non-retro type of and the reflection and the suppression is a uh, signature of that. So I'll not go to uh, uh, details about the effect of contact resistance, etc. But I'll just mention uh, the usually the contact resistances uh, between graphene and uh, this gold is less than 100 ohm, and the gold with NBS2 is also less than 100 ohm. Uh, only graphene with NBS2 we have the contact, contact resistance of the uh, order of like a two kilo ohm, uh, resistance. So now. Let's go to the second part of my talk. Here I'll now, now let's ask the question, what happened if you apply magnetic field and somehow let's say if the superconductivity survived. Now, once you apply magnet perpendicular magnetic field to a graphene, you have now quantum hole edge state. Now, we are going to look at how this quantum hole edge state, basically your uh, now energy reflection happens from a quantum hole edge state to a superconductor, so superconductor. So the, the main focus will be like in the in the literature theoretically is very interested because of this because it seems there is a edge reconstruction at the inter interface of this graphene and superconductor and if you have a fractional quantum hall uh, regime you can have a Majorana edge state and there are like a Andri wave states like a Andri bound state you those kind of thing can arise. So so to just to give you an overview of what I mean quantum hall effect. So once you apply a perpendicular magnetic field you have this quantum hall edge state through graph you have to is edge state of graphene, but graphene is unique. As, as you know, graphene has a uh, uh, quantum hole edge state for n is equal to zero land level, right? And uh, so uh, this is the bulk, but if you look at, look at, so this is the bulk, so bulk in a graphene, you have a four degeneracy. 
coming from two coming from the valley and two coming from the uh, your uh, spin. Now, as you go towards the edge of your graphene sample, what happened is basically valley basically sort of hybridized and you have sort of like a valley get splitted, but spin, you have a still spin degeneracy. Uh, uh, you still, you have a spin degeneracy. So you can understand in terms of very phase and so on, but uh, that's the uh, basic point. And so now if you have Fermi energy here, because you have the, now spin degeneracy, uh, you have a spin up and down, both channels are uh, available, you have a conductance of two square over h. So now, what happens if you bring that quantum hole H state with a, a, a superconductor? So now this, this H state, which is coming as an electron, so this electron now will reflect as a hole, but it, again, hole has to reflect like an electron, hole, and vice versa. So in this process, you can imagine, basically you sort of having like a two A's, one is like an electron-like, and one is like a hole-like. And this, they can interfere and can sort of like an Andre bound state, you can have an Andre edge state. So there are uh, um, theoretical work by Binyakar and uh, Matthew Fisa long ago on this kind of uh, problem of this edge state uh, with a superconductor. So let's see now the, what is the data for our device. So this is the four Tesla data. You have uh, this uh, close to two e square over h uh, plateau. We don't see exactly two e square over h. As I told you, this is like a uh, two pro measurement, I, we have a, uh, a finite, con, finite resistance between a graphene and an EBS2, and that's the reason we don't see a uh, two square over H. There are lots of fluctuations that this fluctuation has an importance which I'm going to come uh, later. Uh, so now if you keep increasing, you still have uh, this plateau. This is the eight Tesla tes data and the 10 Tesla data. The most important thing, at 10 Tesla, eight Tesla onwards, you see sort of like a broken, uh, the symmetry is broken, but the most importantly, you see the conductance is suppressed at n is equal to zero Landau level. So to just co just correlate wh wh what I'm talking about, so what I mean, when the Fermi energy here, you see a two e square over h here, when you Fermi energy uh, uh, inside your n is equal to zero Landau level, you have the conduction is suppressed, and, uh, uh, and then again. So now, the suppression, if you look at the value of the suppression, is very unique. In fact, if you look at the resistance of that, it's like a 200 mega ohm. To my knowledge, to the literature, in the 10 tesla magnetic field, such a low mobility, like 15,000 only mobility, people have seen only like a 20, something like a 100 kilo ohm resistance. Nobody has seen such a high resistance. Even at 32 tesla magnetic field, people have reported like a one mega ohm resistance. So this was, so this was very surprising. Is it just a something like a normal suppression? Is it like a because of gap opening or something else? Okay, and to be honest, this is our limit to measure because we are exciting very small signal because it's a very low temperature experiment and this is limited by the, our lock in fluctuation and so on and we believe this is actually conductance is zero at this level. So what is going on? So you can ask whether do you have a superconductivity in, the, in, in that, uh, uh, at this regime. Now let's look at, you sit uh, here, uh, this n is equal to zero Landau level and you do the bias dependent curve. So here is the data as a function of bias by sitting at different point of this uh, uh, year. And you look at, you, if you look at that, then you see the superconductivity gap feature and inside again superconductivity gap. And we, for different backgate voting, we have just shifted the conductance uh, to make it clear, right? In fact, even you can do like, a, you can sit on a plateau. This is for a different device on a bilayer graphene. What we have seen in a plateau, if you were only just Without superconducting contact, if you do the bias dependent curve, you see a flat curve. But if you have a superconductor, you see again this coherence peak. And this thing we have seen even more than four devices. Okay. So the, the message is up to 10 Tesla, superconductivity survives. Yes. And we have seen, I told you zero Tesla, the TC is seven Kelvin. At 10 Tesla, TC is 2.5 Kelvin, and the superconductivity gap has reduced to 0.8 MeV. But there is a twist in the story. Is it completely suppressed? In fact, actually, if you can look at, there is some sort of spike is there. So we, so in the beginning, we are missing this point. What happens if you zoom this thing, you see exactly at the Dirac point, there is a peak. And that's the two, you know, uh, both side increment of the conductor. So you have a peak at the center. And this peak, we have seen up to one Kelvin. So like 238, uh, up to uh, 500 millikelvin, you can, you can still see, but two, ten, one Kelvin almost is a, uh, the noise is comparable to the peak. And this one, for a different thermal cycle also, if you take out the sample, again you cool it down, this peak is exactly there at the data. So we are surprised what is going on. So it's not something, it's a gap or something. 
Uh, is, it, is it coming from the gap or something else? Right. So what we did then, so let's look at, is there any gap in the system? Because usually you apply magnetic field, Today morning there was a, there are uh, talk about you know valley splitting and so on. So you can open a gap, real gap. So in order to do that, what we have done above. So we we plot the conductance as a function of magnetic field above T C. This is at eight Kelvin and below T C. Above T C, you see the con at n is equal to zero, and level conductance is decreasing, which basically signals that there is some sort of gap opening. Uh, and below two thirty eight, uh, below T C, we see like conductance goes to zero at nine Tesla onwards. So, and we did, if there is a gap, can we estimate the gap? So we have done uh, like activation uh, RNES plot uh, 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 above TC to, uh, so this, is, uh, this has been done from three Kelvin to 10 Kelvin data, and this perfectly fit, fit linear with the one by three data. So that tells you there is a sort of gap of 0.5 MeV. And then followed by, we did a tilted a magnetic field experiment. So we did, so, so far I showed you only zero uh, Tesla magnetic field, but we did also 35 degree and 90 degree. So if you do 90 degree, which is a parallel magnetic field, nothing happens. It's just a uh, uh, G, uh, normal GVZ. But if you have a 35 degree data angle, uh, if you apply magnetic field, what we have seen, the if this is a log scale plot, what we have seen, the suppression, it depends on total magnetic field. It doesn't depend on the perpendicular magnetic field. So here, for, the, for this example, you have the perpendicular magnetic field is different, but total magnetic field is same you have the uh, similar separation. On the other hand here, B perpendicular is same, but B total is different, you have the different separation. So look like the separation, it depends on B total. So something spin is important in my problem, right? So before going to uh, explain what is going on, I told you there are these fluctuations, it's not like a, some sort of, uh, uh, some noise or something. There, there, is, there, is, there, is, there is a something, you know, some, uh, some kind of characteristic of this fluctuation we have. So I told you there is a eighth state which is mixing of this electron hole, hole eighth state, right? mixture of electron hole. And it has predicted theoretically that if you have this electron hole eighth state, and if there is an interference between them, that you can have this kind of feature. So this, what is that, what I am plotting down? I am sitting here in this plateau, and now as a function of gate voltage and bias, what I see, sometimes you have a zero, so red mean is a high conductance, sometimes you see a zero bias peak, Sometimes we split it peak, again they join zero bias peak, again split it, and so on. So this was like a predicted, which is a signature of Andrew H state, okay? So now, let's see what, what is the suppression and the, that I was talking about this small peak at n is equal to zero, uh, uh, this thing. So I told you n is equal to zero, you have this uh, four degeneracy, like a two valley and two, two spin degeneracy. Now once you apply, start applying magnetic field, there will be value splitting, which is uh, proportional to the E square over by epsilon LV. And still, you keep increasing, there will be Zeeman spin, right? And that's the actual gap, your, uh, gap of your system, which is the eventually delta E. Now, now imagine if this is your scenario, like uh, at this magnetic field. So you have a spin up, spin down, again spin up, and spin down. Now you bring your superconductor. Now once you bring a superconductor here, at this, which is a, uh, here the plateau of two e square over h, you have both the spins are there, because Cooper pair you have to make the single state, so both pairs are uh, okay, so the and the reflection is possible, there is no problem. But as you close to here, now you see this band only have one type of spin. You cannot make the and the reflection, because the spin polarized state is completely blocked. So that, that's the place here, you have conductance completely zero. But once you go to the, Dirac point, what happens, still you can have a making a pair by higher order process. Not at, at the Fermi energy, but you still, you have up and down spin which can make the pair. And that's basically gives you a exactly Dirac point, this uh, inside. And the peak is very, very small because you, it's like a, it's like a, your, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's depend on the competition between this gap and uh, this, this gap versus temperature and so on, right? So that, that sort of uh, 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 scenario we have. So, so, so basically full su suppression, once you will have a full suppression once the G1 gap is small, higher than your superconducting gap. And experimentally what we have found, that two delta is 0.8 MeV, and our delta E, this delta E which was measured above superconductivity gap from the activation plot, which tells you around 0.5 MeV, which tells you that our superconductivity gap is higher than this thing, and you can have this process. 
And what is known from the literature that Zeeman gap is uh, 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 1.2 MeV here, and we, the Bailey gap is around 10 MeV, which is very consistent with our uh, uh, this model. So here uh, I'll conclude. So the first part, what I have shown, the transition from retro to non-retro type of and the reflection near the Dirac point of Dauphin, and we see suppression of and the reflection at mu is equal to zero quantum all state due to spin polarization, and you also see that and the reflection at the Dirac point of a quantum Hall fluid. In fact, that is actually specular and Dirac. So by this, I will conclude uh, my talk. So, uh, so here is the, my collaborator. So this work was done by, by PhD student, uh, uh, who is very hardworking and uh, highly motivated uh, uh, student, uh, Manos, and I have a very intense collaboration with Professor Pratham Rai Choudhury from TAFR, and there are lots of people, scientists, whom I should uh, acknowledge uh, for uh, uh, my uh, research work. And this was the funded by uh, DST and Annalisan. And I would like to thank for your time. We have time for many.